Hey everybody, how's every, everything going today on a Sunday evening? Um, just want to communicate with you a little bit. Uh, on Sunday afternoons, I try to do a little breakdown of our Sunday meeting. And men of God today had some amazing things to share and a couple of key words. I like to write down some of the key prophetic statements uh, headlines that I see and I hear and um, then I come back in the evening with my children and try to break those headlines down and go through the word and study it through so there was a word today that I just wanted to kind of go over with you hopefully it'll be a blessing but the word was vex vex v-e-x and um, you know couple of the men were talking today about how the devil is in our society right now. There's a great vexation, um, a lot of uh, heightened sin. Uh, the, the Old Testament talks about demons newly come up, the porters at the gate. Uh, a lot of key porters have uh, open gates uh, where, where demons can travel in and, and infiltrate the area. So there's there's new things coming up, newly come up things, um, immorality. There's just a, there's a vexation in the air. And the word vexation or vex in the, in the word of God means to oppress, means to, uh, uh, to depress. It means to wear out. Uh, it means a lot of different things. And the purpose of it is uh, in warfare, because we're all in a warfare as Christians, is for the enemy remember our our weapons are not carnal and our battle is not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers in dark regions and dark areas principalities and powers um, that have been unleashed on our nation and so you're going to feel the effect of that so first of all I would like to start off with 2nd Peter 2 uh, 7 and 8 and if you go back to verse 6, it says, In the turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, he condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Verse 7 says, And he delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Uh, for that righteous man, and referring back to Lot, dwelling among them, so he chose to dwell in a sinful place, in a sinful city, in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So one of the strategies um, is of the enemy is by seeing and hearing. He wants us to see and to hear this wickedness over and over. He wants to say things contrary to the Word of God. He wants us to see things contrary to, to the Word of God so that we eventually would become, it would become just normal. Lot separated from Abraham, and Abraham said, you, you pick which way you want to go, I'll go the opposite. Well, Lot saw uh, the city, he saw the lushness of the grass, the green, the grass is greener over there, he said. He wanted to be around that city. He got into a city, a sinful city, who he didn't stand for the things that they did, but day after day after day, he heard it and he saw it and it just began to numb him. You know, you've heard of the old saying where the frog is put into, if you just throw a frog into a hot boiling pot, He's going to jump out immediately. But if you put him in a uh, cooler temperature and then you slowly turn up the heat, then, that, then, then that's where you can trick the frog. And so Satan always works opposite. He's a copycat. He, he's like, the Bible says he's like a roaring lion. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is a roaring lion. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's got all his teeth intact. He's got all his voice intact. He's got all his authority. He's got all his power. Satan is like a roaring lion. He's a copycat. 
He wants us to think that he has all this power, that he has all this authority, that he can change times, that he can change seasons. And so he, he is, he, he's going to copy the way the Lord does it. And the Lord does it just like in Romans 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 2, that you're going to be, how is a Christian transformed by the renewing of his mind, by not being conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of his mind. As I spend time in the Word, and I spend time with Christ, and I spend time in, the, in prayer, as I spend time praying in the Spirit, my, I'm being transformed, my mind is being renewed, and I am not adopting the ways of the world. I'm lessening my love for the world, and I'm increasing my love for God, for God the Father. Because First John chapter two says that if the love of the if, if you love the world, love not the world, because if you love the world, then the love of the Father is not in you. So this house of David, this heart for God, should be waxing stronger and stronger, and that house of Saul should be waxing weaker and weaker. We should we should be growing in our love for the Lord, and so this is an opportunity. And it says in the last days, many's hearts will fail for fear. There'll be a great falling away. So this is an aggressive, um, proactive posture that we have to take now that in seeing and hearing Lot's righteous soul was vexed and he barely got out of the city. The, if the angel would not have grabbed Lot by the hand and transported him out of the city, who knows, he may not have ever made it out. And his wife actually turned back and uh, turned into a pillar of salt. And so Lot wasn't that much, you know, he didn't do that much greater than she did. And then he, even after the angel delivered him, he's complaining about climbing a mountain. So it's important in these last days, in the last of the last days, that we endure hardness as a good soldier. I heard uh, one of our men of God, one of our elders say, a lot of Christians think they're on, they're trying to get on a cruise ship, carnival cruise, instead of realizing they're on a battleship. And you're gonna be more easily offended with what's going on, with the hardships, with the trials, with the persecutions, if you think that God saved you to ride the carnival cruise and just to have a life of happiness, peace, meet your goals, meet your needs, you know, fill your belly. If you think if you think that that's what Christ, you know, that you came to Christ for, that this season is going to be very difficult. It's going to be a rude awakening because it's time now to be helpers of the war. It's time now to to make sure, like David's mighty men did in First Chronicles 11, is to make sure that David is king. To make sure that Jesus is king. And that's going to cost us something. And so uh, it's a tough time, but it's also an exciting time for those disciples, for those Nazarites, for those um, that he called and predestined before the foundation of the earth to love him, to fall in love with him, and to seek him, to pursue him. So I'm just encouraging you, uh, iron sharpens iron, I just want to share my part. And I want you to, uh, instead of us being swept away, by the uh, hearing and seeing of all this vexation of the enemy, let's see and hear what God is saying. Let's look unto Jesus. Let's get together, us men, uh, get together as couples, and let's share the word, and let's let that word of God uh, run swiftly and be glorified. Now, uh, I got two other verses I just wanted to share with you here. Um, Daniel, another way that that God, uh, the, the enemy tries to wear us out, and Daniel seven twenty five, and he shall speak great words, is what the Bible says, against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. So one of the strategies that the enemy tries to do is to wear out the saints, okay? And so the way we fight against this is we spend time in the Word. We spend time in the Word. 
We spend time in prayer. We pray in the Holy Ghost, as Jude says, building up yourselves in your most holy faith. We don't forsake the assembly. We must assemble with the body of Christ. For when we come together, bone to his bone, joint to joint, then we are strengthened. And then we want to also uh, be worshipers. He said that true worshipers would, would worship in spirit and truth. This is the days and, and turn off the news, turn off the world, turn off the seeing and the hearing, turn off all these messages, uh, you know, social media. It can be a, a, a great blessing. It can be a great tool. And then the next minute it can be an addiction. So you have to, you know, the sons of God are led by the spirit of God. We got to be led by the spirit of God in these things. The last thing I want to end on is uh, Judges 16, 16. Uh, and this is the story of Samson. It came to pass when she, Delilah is the she here, she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. Another, this, this word vex, okay, vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart, and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. So he was a Nazarite, which is an Old Testament term that is uh, connected with a, the New Testament term disciple. And so he gave up his Nazarite, he was devoted, he was separated from the world and devoted to God. And he gave that away to be with this woman, this lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. He gave that separation. He was separated from the world and he was devoted to God. And he gave that up to be with this woman and she vexed him. That was a strategy of the enemy through Delilah. I'm going to nag him. I'm going to vex him. I'm going to wear him out. Well, folks, we stick together. We keep praying for each other. We keep encouraging each other. We keep uh, building up our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, uh, um, speaking to each other, speaking the word over our children, over our wives, uh, praying the word, uh, getting up and, and blessing God and praising him, worshiping him and keeping these words before us. And so, you know, in Psalms chapter two, there's a reverse vexation. And that is that, that the Lord is going to vex the wicked in their sore displeasure. So, so if we can just hang in there and uh, like David said, in my distress, I was enlarged. So when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And so we were born for this hour, men and ladies too. Uh, a brother is born for adversity. And by the blood of Jesus, by what he did on the cross, we've been made joint heirs. We've been made brothers with Jesus. And so the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives and abides in me and you. And so we don't have to wear away. We don't have to give in. We don't have to conform. You know, Daniel and the boys, they told Nebuchadnezzar, they said, O king, live forever, but we're not going to bow to the music. We're not going to bow. And there's the world is producing a, a message. Uh, it's producing music. It's producing wimpy men. And so uh, we're not going to bow to what the enemy is saying through the world. Okay? We're going to only bow to Jesus Christ. And through this process, we're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Uh I'm about out of time, so I just wanted to share that with you, share my part, and we'll be talking to you soon. Thanks. God bless you guys.